This is an all but definitive guide to the Hollywood nepo verse. Nepotism is too long of a word we've decided, so now it's nepo. Gabriel Cain Day Lewis. That's uh, the son of uh, Daniel Day Lewis and Isabel Idiana. Idiani, <laughs> who is going to be on um, a Daily Wire movie called Terror on the Prairie. How the Mighty Have Fallen, huh? I'm just going to kind of like stop when I, when I see someone I actually recognize. Like Tilda Swinton. I recognize Tilda Swinton. Her, her kid's going to be in something. Philip Seymour Hoffman's son. Cooper Hoffman. Yeah. It just keeps going, by the way. Like for this, this, this listen to this one. This one's a really egregious one. This is Destry Spielberg, who uh, her short film written by Owen King, who is Stephen King's son and starring who, uh, Hopper Penn, Sean Penn's son, caused a nepotism backlash when it was announced. Yeah. From the daughter of Steven Spielberg and the son of Stephen King and the son of Sean Penn comes nepotism the movie. The point is that there's all these people trying to make it big in Hollywood, right? And the odds against them are already pretty astronomical. You're already pretty god unlikely to become a famous Hollywood star. But with this degree of nepotism, chances are you're not even going to get through the door. They're just going to hire some actor's kid. you know. And what are the chances that the actor's kid is is really the best for the role. I'm not saying it never happens. Clearly sometimes nepot the people who get their jobs via nepotism are talented. But there's tons of times where you know probably we're dealing with inferior budging products in terms of performance, in terms of directing, in terms of all these things because it's being directed by the kid of somebody who was talented, right? You know, and I mean, you'll see some talented people on this list. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say none of these people have any talent or, or deserve to be there. So, for instance, like Jamie Lee Curtis, daughter of, um, I can't, uh, Janet Lee, and I think another celebrity from the Psycho thing, right? So here's her sort of like rebuttal to all this. She says... I've been a professional actress since I was 19 years old, so that makes me an OG Nepo baby. I've never understood, nor will I, what qualities got me hired that day. <laughs> I mean, you're Janet Lee's daughter. You know what qualities got you hired, your relationship to your mother. But since my first two lines on Quincy as a contract player at Universal Studios... To this uh, last spectacular creative year, some 44 years later, there's not a day in my professional life that goes by without me being reminded that I am the daughter of a movie stars, of movie stars, not a movie star. The current conversation about Nepo babies is just designed to try to diminish and denigrate and hurt. For the record, I have navigated 44 years with the advantage of my associated and reflected fame uh, brought me. I don't pretend there aren't any. Uh, that try to tell me that I have no value on my own. Uh, it's curious how we immediately make assumptions and snide remarks that someone related to someone else who is famous in their field for their art would somehow have no talent whatsoever. Well, sometimes they don't. Uh, I've come to learn that is simply not true. I've suited up and shown up uh, for all different kinds of work with thousands of, and of thousands of people. And every day I've tried to bring integrity and professionalism and love and community and art to my work. I am not alone. There are many of us dedicated to our craft, proud of our lineage, strong in our belief uh, in our right to exist. So in these difficult days of so much rage in the world, can we just try to find that quiet voice that the brilliant movie Everything Everywhere All at Once reminds us? As my friend Rob Reynolds Studios reminds us, note to self, uh, be kind, be kind, be kind. Oh, yes, of course. You know, to some, I mean, I'm not going to totally shoot on Jamie Lee Curtis because she's definitely one of the people who's benefited from nepotism that actually does have talent. But this is not just about, hey, these people got their jobs via nepotism, so they have no talent. This is about a problem that goes well beyond just, you know, the world of acting, right? This is about... Uh, a problem that you see in uh, corporate America. This is a problem you see in even like your local 
you know, businesses like the small business, you know, the boss's son gets that promotion over the, the guys who actually probably deserve it, you know? And it's always like, oh, well, you know, family, family, family. And, you know, we see that the results of that, sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're Jamie Lee Curtis, but a lot of times they're like Scott Eastwood or, you know, Daily Wire, Day, Day, Day Lewis and shit. And it's just like, oof, you know, really? That's the best we can get from this. And, you know, look, I'm sure that there are also disadvantages to being the son or the daughter of a famous actor, director, or whatever. Like, you're always in their shadow, and you're always going to be judged against them and stuff. So to that degree, you know, maybe there is a little bit of a disadvantage there. But in terms of getting your foot in the door, it seems like this is a tremendous fudge. advantage. Because who the fudge is going to say no to auditioning Colin Hanks? You know, even if he's unproven, even if you don't know who the hell he is, like, remember when he got that big role as the villain in season, um, I think, six of Dexter? And it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to be the big villain in Dexter season six. And he was all right, I guess. You know, he was definitely better than the season eight villain, I, I suppose. But still, you know, like, it's like, did you get that because you were the best for this? Or did you get this because your daddy's Tom Hanks? And that question always hangs over these guys and these gals. And um, a lot of times you watch the performance and then you say to yourself at the end of it, it seems like the answer is probably the latter thing. You're there because mommy or daddy or mommy and daddy are celebrities. But this goes beyond that. I mean, like it's like the, the, the boss's son getting the promotion, the, 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 you know, the family member that, that is an incompetent being pushed up the corporate ladder uh, you know, being basically fast tracked towards partnership and success while far more deserving people are left behind. And, you know, how do you, how do you write that inequality? I'm not exactly sure, but you don't write it by being like, Oh, it's just a bunch of haters jealous of my success. <laughs> so here's another defense. This one comes from Tom Hanks who is slowly turning into Jeff Goldblum, I guess. Wasn't your daddy a millionaire, Teej? Yeah, but he lost his money long before I became a YouTuber, so that didn't have anything to do with anything. And also, my dad never used his connections at YouTube to get me work here. Tom Hanks dismissed the current nepotism debate when recently talking to The Sun about his family of actors. Hanks is married to actor Rita Wilson, and they have two children, rapper and actor Chet Hanks. By the way, if you've never gone down the Chet Hanks rabbit hole, if you've never given yourself permission to explore the oeuvre of Chet Hanks, do so right now because it's fucking hilarious. So on top of making terrible music, he will literally do stuff like go to like Christian music festivals and do like 10 minute rants that are laden with profanity and like challenge audience members to fights and he will sell you like a self-help routine for an insane price tag. And it's going to like teach you how to deal with life's problems or something. And it's like, I already know how you deal with life pro life problems. You are the son of a famous actor. By the way, talks massive shit about his family, even though they're the only reason he has even a sliver of success or is not homeless on the street sucking B for crack. Um, and Truman Hanks, who appears in uh, Tom's new movie, A Man Called Otto. Hanks' son from a previous marriage, Colin Hanks, is the most, uh, is, uh, whose most recent acting roles include The Offer and A Friend for the Family. So, yeah, he's, his whole family is in show business, basically. Except for Chet Hanks, who is just a fudge train wreck, but whatever. Look, this is a family business, Hanks said in the interview. This is uh, what we've been doing forever. It's what all our kids grow up in. If we were a plumbing supply business or if we ran a florist shop down the street, the whole family would be putting in uh, time at some point, even if it was just inventory at the end of the year. Hollywood in productions on the caliber that Tom Hanks... Have you ever seen the credits for a movie? It's like the population of a, of a uh, medium-sized town, all right? You cannot li liken that to like, what, what I mean, like a plumbing supply business that hires 12 people. We're talking about a massive fudging industry where people are paid millions of dollars and that employs, you know, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people probably, 
maybe even millions if, if you like really uh, take it out to like even like the levels of like catering and gophers and shit. Ooh. So uh, comparing that to like the local family, you know, burger shop where the kids help, like on that show, Bob's Burgers, you seen the show? That's not nepotism, is it? Well, then how can you say this is? It's like they're not comparable. You know, that's ridiculous. The thing that doesn't change no matter what happens, no matter what your uh, last name is, is whether it works or not, Hanks continued. That's the issue. Anytime, of, uh, anytime any of us go off and try to tell a fresh story or create something that has a beginning and a middle and an end, doesn't matter what our last names are, we have to do the work in order to make that a true and authentic experience for the audience. Right. But I don't know if you've noticed, but like audiences are increasingly not pleased with these uh, big Hollywood movies that were being fed. And uh, yeah, a lot of the reason for that is, you know, rehashed plots and uh, overused tropes and, you know, films being, you know, uh, micromanaged by money men and, uh, you know, creativity basically being in a stunningly short supply. But a lot of that also has to do, I think with the issue of everybody's incompetent goddamn kid gets a job on the movie set, whether they deserve it or not, uh, including in some big starring roles, like we have to be subjected to a substandard performance just because that person shares a last name with, uh, with a person who's well-connected in the industry. And so, like, really, you've made it all of our problems at that point. I also wanted to just read uh, some of this article from Raw Story because I think that this article does a good job of deconstructing a lot of the bullshit Ooh. we just heard from Tom Hanks and from Jamie Lee Curtis here. There is a common feeling that many of us have experienced in the professional and academic environments, especially when struggling against gender or racial bias. It's called imposter syndrome, the feeling that one doesn't deserve one's position and others will discover this lack of competence at any moment. I felt this way as a, a female graduate student in a science field in the 1990s. I felt as if a young journalist of color in a white dominated industry. The rich and elite among us appear to feel the opposite, that they are deserving of unearned privilege. A recent series of stories in New York Magazine headlined the year of the Nepo baby, has struck a chord among uh, those who are being outed for having benefited from insider status. Curtis is clearly a talented actor, of that there is little doubt, but in defending her privilege from critique, she reveals just how deserving she considers herself. It is the converse of imposter syndrome, the insider syndrome. The act of calling out nepotism doesn't necessarily imply that nepo babies are not talented. Sometimes they are, sometimes they ain't. It means pointing out that some talented people are also are able to benefit from family connections and fame that other equally talented people are not able to. Well, Fudge. equally talented. Let's talk about the people who are more talented, who are, you know, who never get the chance to shine because all of these juicy roles are being given to this person's kid and that person's kid. So we don't really have a new emergent talent that actually is there based on their merit, based on their ability to put butts in seats. I mean, like, talk about the death of the movie star. Maybe this is an ingredient in that. You know, we talk about how there's, like, not really very many big stars who can get people to go to the movie theater just on name recognition alone anymore. And, like, don't you think this might be part of that? The fact that you keep rewarding people who are, you know, maybe aren't the best for the role, maybe don't deserve to be there. Like, what are the odds that the person who is the best for this part, the person who is the most talented just happens to be, you know, the, the daughter or the son of some, of some celebrity, you know, not even like, Hey, the acting is in our blood. I mean, I understand if you're like the scars guards are fudging some it, maybe that can be like, kind of say like, well, that we're, that's, uh, that's our, you know, trade as a family or whatever. But, um, but this is not that this is just like, Hey, can my unimpressive underwhelming one seventeenth of like my talent and charisma son or daughter star in this, you know, huge gigantic budget film, please. And the studios are like, yeah, why not? The critique is intended to call out elitism, not to diminish, denigrate or hurt as Curtis accuses journalists of doing. Journalism that exposes power and its corruptive influence among elites punches up, not down. Curtis is hardly a disadvantaged person whose well-being will suffer from such coverage. Rather, stories pointing out her parental advantages could potentially help to even the playing field so that it's unacceptable in the future to consider family member conne uh, family connections in film and TV auditions. I don't think it should be 
verboten to consider them because I don't think that like just because your parent is a celebrity, that means you're not allowed to have those same dreams and aspirations and stuff because maybe you are a good actor. Uh, so I don't think we should necessarily count them out either. I think that there needs to be something done to put an end to this idea that just because your daddy was Tom Hanks, that means you automatically have some sort of like great Hanksian talent. Like Chet Hanks alone proves that ain't true. But Hollywood celebrities, however much they enjoy prestige and privilege, are an easy target. Nepotism is rife in, the, in all the halls of power in the world of art, sports, and even journalism, and especially in corporate and political circles. Billionaires, especially those in tech, may propagate the myth of the merit-based American dream, but some of the most dramatic success stories began with a parent using their wealth or connections to give their child an upper hand. Take Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, who became one of the wealthiest people. In his 30s, Gates' early success was largely due to the well-documented connections that his parents flexed on his behalf to get his fledgling company off the ground. Other tech uh, Nepo babies include Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, whose father loaned him $100,000 to start his company, and Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, whose parents were early investors in his online retail business to the tune of $250,000. Nepoti nepotism is part of the fabric of capitalism. For centuries, unfair advantages were available to those who have historically faced fewer hurdles uh, through the sheer luck of being born into a family with wealth, connections, or respect within their field. Indeed, in order to beat back the imposter syndrome, many advice advise channeling the unearned confidence of a mediocre straight white man. Uh, our economy is rigged to encourage nepotism by ensuring that the already wealthy pass their wealth and by extension their power that that money buys them to their children. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, CBPP, pointed out how the tax code is written in order to benefit the moneyed class. According to the CBPP report, high income and especially high wealth filers enjoy a number of generous tax benefits that can dramatically lower their tax bills. Nepo babies who defend their status reinforce the notion that wealth, fame, and privilege equal brilliance, talent, and genius. The reality is that the privileged among us simply have the means to cheat. The rest of us are sold the lie that working hard will bring rewards rather than unearned wealth. This, in turn, encourages cheating among those who cannot rely on nepotism to gain power. One well-known example of fake-it-till-you-make-it approach is Anna uh, Sorokin, a, a woman who fabricated lies about wealth and power, landed her in prison, and made her the focus of a Netflix show. Sorokin uh, faked being a Nepo baby, a German heiress, in order to live a lavish lifestyle. Sorokin learned that to gain the edge that the money elites have, one must internalize uh, the insider syndrome. So basically, just like by pretending to be one of these privileged what? assholes, you can actually enjoy some of their wealth and privilege just by showing up and being like, ah, yes, I am a German countess. And they're like, right this way. You don't even have to pay. We'll just give you this suite because of the prestige. But anyway, yeah, so this just kind of shows you that this problem, even though it's very noticeable in Hollywood because what they do is right in front of our eyes at all times because they literally, you know, hold their big stinky turds out to our face and say, hey, take a big whiff. Uh, so it's super noticeable in that space, but it's all over American culture, man. Like, there is no meritocracy here. This is basically, if you are born wealthy, you have a tremendous advantage over those who aren't. And everybody knows that. Anybody who would even argue against that is some kind of cretinous moron. But of course, they have to argue against it because if people realize the extent to which the whole system is rigged in favor of the rich and their bloodlines, then this whole notion of this American dream that uh, I guess is what keeps the underclass from rising up, that all just goes up in smoke, right? So they have to continue to propagate this myth that somehow through just hard work and persistent effort, you can make it to the very tippy top. And sure, can it happen? Yeah, but it's basically, you might as well uh, just buy a lottery ticket because you're basically counting on the same sort of odds at that point. People would not tolerate the system that exists if they didn't have this delusional notion that through like consistent effort and hard work and, you know, good old fashioned American know-how, they can somehow beat the system and rise up and join the ranks of the super wealthy, right? 
that can it can all be theirs for the low low price of hard work and elbow grease and never giving up and never surrender and you know all that happens is they work themselves into an early grave and they're dead and their kids are poor and they work themselves into the same early grave and they die poor as well and so on and so forth because you know there's this giant blockade that uh, you know is very difficult for anybody to you know, uh, to surpass. Um, now it's not impossible. It can happen. Uh, I'm not here to tell you that there's never been a self-made and, you know, rich person. Um, but it's pretty but mountain rare. Most of the time, the vast majority of these wealthy, uh, elites and even, even down to just like your local businessman or your local politician, they're all well-connected. They're all, you know, it's all old money that's been funneled down and down and down. And a lot of times the origins of that money are pretty much in, um, pretty dubious in nature, pretty shady stuff. Like the Kennedys, it was bootlegging, you know, and a lot of these people are just the, uh, you know, the descendants of, of robber barons and other various uh, criminal factions, right? Would you consider yourself a wealthy person, someone who got very lucky? I don't, I mean, I don't know if the amount of money I have would be considered wealth to some people. Um, even in, I mean, I've never been a millionaire in my life. Even at the height of my success, even when the drunken peasants was this, you know, roaring, you know, nat like getting, you know, 100,000 views an episode pretty consistently and everybody was watching it and everybody had the memes of it on their lips and all this stuff. And uh, it was tremendously influential in this YouTube space, even at the height of that and all of the, you know, ad deals we had and all that stuff. There was never a point of, um, I am now a millionaire, you know, I'm now looking at my bank account and I'm seeing multiple figures. I, the close, I don't even think I've, I don't even think I've ever had an account hit 200,000 or anything, right? I've been over a hundred thousand dollars before I'm not now, but I've been there before. Um, so yeah, I don't think, I don't really consider myself rich. I think I'm like, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing fine for myself. I'm doing better than a lot of people are and I'm grateful for it. But, um, yeah, I'm certainly not a rich dude. Uh, I don't even want to be rich, bro. I just want internet art to be real again. <laughs> yeah. Lots of war profiteers too. That's true. I'm 90% of the way uh, to a degree in biochemistry, but they require a year long unpaid internship to complete, which I can't afford and still eat. Yeah. I mean, uh, so this, this is uh, one of those places where having a rich daddy or something would come in handy, right? This is basically just like a barrier for entry to the poor. Cause it's like, you're 90% there with the degree, but because you can't afford to not to work and not get paid for a whole year of your life. Because you can't do that. You know, you're basically being blockaded. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying there's a blockade that just prevents people from upward mobility. You know, at a certain point, like they want you to have a certain degree of success. But when you get to a certain point, they start pushing the other way. Like, no, you stay down there. You stay down there. The only way that capitalism tell poor people they can be rich is through education. But even that is, too, it is locked behind a pay. I mean, yeah, like. Oh, yeah, you know, if you want to get rich, just educate yourself. Just educate yourself. And then, you know, oh, we're not going to forgive these student loan debts. No, student, I mean, massive increase in college tuition prices every year. Harder and harder to possibly pay for this education that you're supposed to get. Um, so, I mean, it's all just a giant scam. Uh, and they make sure that there's no upward mobility for you whatsoever i mean not whatsoever because they need enough success stories so that they can point to it and be like see it does work but uh you know beyond like the tokenistic amount of people that they have to let into the rich person club to make you continue to believe the lie beyond that they're not letting anybody up there all right uh the only way to win is to marry into wealth or to befriend someone who is wealthy via conferences and win via secondary nepotism that's true i mean some people do just try to network their way to that place. But even then it's like, if you're not, if you are some poor schlub and you're trying to cozy up to some, you know, billionaire's daughter, I mean, <laughs> they're going to be very fudge and wary of you, right? They're not just going to be like, Oh, well, you know, she loves who she loves.
So even if you manage to convince her that you're great, you know, that family is going to drag their feet in accepting you because you're going to be the hoi polloi. You're going to be beneath their great bloodline or whatever the hell. Be amazing. 